In this video, we're going to show you how to use the design and editing tools in Aspire to create the set of vectors you can see in the top half of the screen here. The second video in this set of tutorials will show you how to take those vectors and create the model that you can see in the bottom half. Let's start a new copy of Aspire. So let's click on the icon to create a new file. For this project, we're going to set our job size to be 12 inches in X, 4 inches in Y. We'll leave Z0 set to the top of the material and the thickness set to 3 quarters of an inch. We're going to work while we're doing the vector layout with the XY date and position in the center of the part here, as it's already checked. We're going to work in inches. We'll set the modeling resolution to high and hit OK. To help us draw our first few vectors, I'm going to switch on the snap grid. So I'm going to come up to the edit drop down menu and choose snap options. And you can also see we can access that through the shortcut key F4. And in here, I'm going to switch on the snap to grid and leave the grid spacing set to 0 0.25 inches. So we've got a dot every quarter of an inch here that we can snap our lines, arcs and other vector shapes to. First one I want to sketch here is going to be a line across the bottom of the job that will represent the first drive rail for our two rail sweep. So let's click on draw polyline. I'm going to come down here and make sure I've got this, the cursor, so I can see it like this that shows me that it's snapping to one of the points. Now you can see it's showing me the coordinate x minus 6, y minus 2, so I'm going to click there. Now you can see it's snapped to that point and then I'm going to come to this end until I get the same cursor there and click again. And then to accept that, I'm just going to right mouse click and that'll create that line for me and it'll exit out of the polyline function. Next, with that selected, I'm going to click on it again to go into transform mode. I'm going to come over the end here so you see I can get this the crosshair there showing me I'm snapping to the end of my line. I'm going to hold the control key down, click there in order to grab the line and then drag upwards and by holding the control key down I'm going to make a copy and I'm just going to snap to the second uh, dot so half an inch above the original point and let go then I'm going to do the same again hover over the end there so I get the crosshairs hold control down click with the mouse and drag that up so that it's three snap points from the top or three quarters of an inch from the top and let go and then do the same again with that and just grab and snap that to the very top there. Let's click to go back to selection mode and we can see we've now created these four lines which are very accurately positioned and sized thanks to the snap grid. Now we're going to sketch a rectangle to use as the basis for what will be the cross section that we're going to use in the two rail sweep. So let's click on draw rectangle and click on the top left hand corner snap point here and I'm going to click and drag down a rectangle all the way to the bottom that's a quarter of an inch thick and let go on that snap point there. Again I'm just going to right mouse click in order to accept that and exit the form. Now I want to go into node editing to edit this um, rectangle we've just created. So let's come over and click on the icon here. We could also hit N on the keyboard. So go into node editing and what I want to do first is open up the bottom end. This is going to be a cross section so it needs to be an open vector. So I'm going to hover over this side of the rectangle. I'm going to right mouse click and I'm going to go down to the option to delete span. Notice we've got all these shortcut keys we can use as well instead of using the right click menu. This time I'm going to hit delete span and that's now opened up that end. So we've just got three sides on our rectangle. Next, I'm going to input a couple of points. So here, I'm going to right mouse click, choose the option to insert a point. Also, notice we can use I for that. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to use I on the keyboard here to do the same thing. Then, I'm just going to click to grab this and just snap it to this point here. Click to grab this and snap it to this point here. Now, I'm going to come back over And while we're still in node editing mode, I'm going to carefully click and drag a box to select these two nodes here and then click on one of them and move those up and snap them to the next point up here. So that's now half an inch across there or two snap points. Now we're going to edit these three spans and make them all bezier curves. 
So I can right mouse click over the span, choose the option to Bezier. We can also use B to do that as well. So if I hover over here and hit B on the keyboard, you can see it adds these handles of over here and hit B on the keyboard as well. Next, I'm going to click to grab this handle and just snap it to this point here. Click, grab this handle, snap it to this point here. I'm going to click and grab this handle, snap it to this point here. Click and grab this handle, snap it to this point here. Finally, I'm just going to click and grab this handle and drag it out and snap it to this point here. And so what we're doing is just creating the curve that's going to be the cross section for our two rail sweep as we come along here. At the top I can see that this is maybe a little higher than I want. I don't want this to go above three quarters of an inch which would be these snap points here. So I'm going to click and drag to select these two handles and I'm going to use the left arrow key or cursor key on the keyboard and just jog that back until it's just under that three quarters of an inch there. So it's not coming past these two snap points here. Once I'm happy with the way that looks, I'm going to come over, click on the icon to go back to selection mode. Then I'm just going to move into the middle of the job and right mouse click to zoom out a little, select that curve, click on it again to go into transform mode, hover over the end node here so that I get the crosshairs, click and snap to that and then just drag this off to the side here so that it's no longer over the main uh, area of my workspace. As I say, we're going to use that as a cross section when we come to the modeling stage of this job. Let's go back, click on zoom to fit again, and now let's sketch the vectors for our leaf decoration in the middle of the part. For this, I don't need the snap grid switched on, so I'm going to hit F4 on the keyboard, the function key F4, in order to bring up the snap settings, that's the shortcut key, and I'm going to uncheck the option snap to grid here and hit OK. Now let's click on the polyline icon here, and the first point that I want to put in needs to be at X0, Y0 in the middle of the part. So I'm going to enter X0, Y0 and hit the add button, and we can see the software's added our first point now. The other points I'm going to sketch are just going to be done freehand. I'm going to come up and put in a point roughly around here. Then I'm going to click and put in a point roughly around here. Click and put in a point roughly around here. And click and put in a point roughly around here. I'm going to right mouse click in order to accept those and exit the function. Next I'm going to go into node editing mode. This time I'm going to enter that mode by hitting N on the keyboard, N for node editing. I'm going to carefully click and drag a box around these three nodes here and then I'm going to hit S on the keyboard to smooth those points. Now we can edit these nodes to make a nice smoothly flowing vector that we'll use to model the stalk for our leaf decoration. I'm going to start in the middle here, just click and drag this the other side of the line there so we've got the direction that that'll flow through the center of the part. Then I'm just going to click on the handles for the other points and level them out. You can see I'm just dragging them until it snaps so that they're going straight through. Here I'm just going to click and drag this node over a bit. I'm going to add some curvature into there and drag this over here a little. The top here I'm just going to drag this handle out, drag this handle out a bit and basically just keep editing this until I'm happy with the position and curvature of everything in the part. Just move that up a little there. Once I like the way that looks, I want to sketch the outline for the leaf. So we're going to go through a similar operation. I'm going to come over and click on the icon to draw polyline. I'm going to click to snap to the end point here. I'm going to come down and click approximately here, here, and then I'm going to find the node there. See how it's snapping? It's showing me the crosshairs there. We'll snap to that point, come down here, here, and here. Again, I'm going to right mouse click in order to accept that and exit the function. Next, I'm going to select that vector. I'm going to hit N on the keyboard to go into node editing. I'm going to drag a box around all the nodes except the first one there and hit S on the keyboard once more to smooth those out. 
and again now we can go in and make edits to these nodes by manually moving around the position of them and their handles. So for this node here that's on the stalk I'd actually like to unsmooth that so I'm going to right mouse click with the cursor over that and uncheck the smooth point option. Now I can drag these handles down and manually change that so that that comes to a sharp point there. I'm just going to make this a little smaller on this side. I've sketched that quite large there. We'll do the same here. I'm just going to reduce that in. I'd like to add a little curvature there, not too much. And then bring that out so that it's going around there. Sometimes you might want to click back on selection mode just to take a look at it without the node so that you can see the flow of the curve. Here if we select it again, hit node editing once more, I'm just going to increase the curvature down the bottom there, reduce this at the top, move that around there till I'm happy with the way that looks. Next what I want to do is edit this outline so that I've got two separate regions because I'm going to use the create shape tool to model each half of the leaf. I'm going to use the stalk to divide the two regions in two. So what I'm going to do is just come over and click on the selection mode icon. I'm going to take this vector that we've got here, the leaf outline, I'm going to right mouse click with that selected and choose the option to move to layer, new layer, and I'm just going to call that layer edit and I'm going to make that invisible for a moment and inactive and hit OK. Now I'm going to select this vector here, right mouse click and choose the option to copy to layer. I want to keep a copy of this on layer 1 but I'm going to say copy to layer, edit and so now if we come up and click on the layer drop down I'm just going to undraw layer 1, I'm going to draw the edit layer and I'm going to select that in order to make it the active layer and hit close. So now you can see we've got our leaf outline on here and we've also got a copy of the stalk vector as well. Now I'm going to come over and click on the icon to trim vectors and I'm just going to click in order to trim this portion of the stalk vector away. So we're just left with the bit that runs up the middle of the leaf. Hit close. Then I'm going to select the close vector that represents the outside of the leaf. I'm going to go into node editing mode. We'll click on the icon here. I'm going to come over the point at the end here, right mouse click and choose the option to cut vector. So we've cut it at that point here and then I'm going to come over this point, right mouse click and cut vector as well. So now if we click back on the selection mode arrow to exit node editing, we've got one vector there, another vector here and a third vector here. Now I want to close each of these but for that I'm going to need two copies of this vector. So what I'm going to do is select it, right mouse click and then choose the option to copy that to the clipboard. Then I'm going to hold shift down and select this vector here. I'm going to come over and click on the icon to join open vectors. We can see that we've got two open vectors at the moment and after, based on the tolerance, because they've essentially got coincident endpoints, we're going to have one closed vector so I can hit the join button. Now I'm going to right mouse click and paste back in my copy of the vector here for the middle of the leaf, hold shift down and select this side. Still unjoin vectors, now I've got those two vectors selected and I can hit join and close and I've got one closed vector here and one closed vector here. Now there's one more vector I'd like to make and that's to describe the inside shape of this bottom leaf and to do that I'm just going to make a copy of this vector here and shrink it down. So I'm going to select that vector click on it again to go into transform mode so I get the editing handles here and then to make a copy of this when I shrink it down I'm going to hold the control key down so I'm going to come over the corner here I want to scale this around its center so I'm going to hold the shift key down and then to make a copy I'm going to also hold the control key down on the keyboard CTRL then I'm going to click on this corner and just shrink by moving the mouse in there and then let go and we can see that's left my original but because I was holding the control key down it's now made this copy. Now I'm going to click on the top blue node there, just rotate that around a little, click in the centre and just move that so that it slightly overlaps the edge here. I may want to just zoom in with the mouse to make sure that that's coming to the vector there and that's coming past the vector here and we'll see how we use that when we come to the modelling stage of the project. 
Next, I'm going to click on the selection mode arrow. I'm going to select these vectors. I'm going to right mouse click and move them back to layer 1. Then in the layers tab, I'm going to right mouse click on the edit layer and choose the option to delete. Then we'll just switch layer 1 back on again. Because it's the only layer, it'll be the active layer. Click back on the drawing tab. Click on the icon to zoom to fit again. Now there's one last job before we finish the vector drawing part of the tutorial and that's to create the cross section vectors that we're going to extrude along our stalk. So I'm going to come over, click on the icon to draw a circle. I'm just going to sketch a circle roughly in this position here and enter a diameter for this of 0.375 inches, 3 eighths of an inch and hit apply and close. Then I'm going to hit N on the keyboard with that selected to go into node editing. I'm going to zoom in here I'm going to hover over this span here and hit D on the keyboard to delete it. Hover over this span here and again hit the D key to delete that. So we're just left with the top half there. Then I'm going to click on selection mode. I'm just going to click on it again to go into transform mode. I'm going to hold the control key and the shift key down. Click on the top white corner here. And just drag that in to shrink that down a little. And then I'm going to come over and click on the icon here to set selected object size. The reason I shrank that down manually first was I could hold control down in order to make a copy of it. Now I can come in and specifically set the width to this to be 0.03 inches and hit apply and close. And we've just made a very small copy of that half circle there. We can move that down a little if we want. So the stalk mainly is going to be this larger half circle we've got here but at the end I want it to taper down to the small circle there which is why I've created both of those vectors. Now let's just click on the zoom to fit icon again to get the 2D view to fit back into the window. If I zoom out a little further we can see all the vectors we've created that we're going to use in the modeling part of this tutorial. So before we finish let's save a copy of the file. I'm going to come up to file, save as and in the project folder for this example, I'm going to give this file the name Leaf Molding Vectors.crv3d and hit save. And that'll be the starting point when we come to the modeling section of this tutorial. In this video, you've seen us create the vectors using the tools in Aspire. We started with a snap grid so we could accurately position and size the vectors for the rails and the cross section for the two rail sweep for the moulding. Then we used the polyline tool to sketch the stalk and the leaf outlines and edited those with the help of moving vectors around on different layers to simplify the parts we were working on. And finally we created a simple circle and edited that to make the cross section we'll use to build the stalk. And that concludes this video.